I was confused on which day it was this morning. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started this morning. We're going to do a lot of um, balancing things, so hopefully you're somewhere with semi-flat surface. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I got from this morning. Um, I know, actually, I know last week Dave and I were talking about um, just getting some, like, ocean time or um, bay time. So we went and did a bay swim last Tuesday. Um, and for those of you that are hesitant because you're scared of not being able to see the bottom or sharks or anything like that, I will say the Coronado Bay was really warm, first of all. Like, we didn't have to wear wetsuits. Um, you can see the bottom the whole time. So it's, like, kind of less freaky. And there's just, like, some starfish and some cute little fish swimming around. And it was really shallow. Like, you could stand up the entire way. Um, so maybe fun for you guys to like get a couple of you guys together and go out and swim. There's a ton of people out there all the time, so it's super safe. Um, I know we might be doing that sometime later this week too, so if we do, I can um, text Dave and we can see if um, you guys want to go ahead and join us, but super fun, not scary. I'm terrified of the ocean, but it was a good time. <laughs> so highly encourage you guys to just like hop in and get some water time. It feels really nice if you have the chance to. Um, cool, let's go ahead and get started this morning. I also cut myself on a um, bread knife this morning. So I hopefully will be able to do everything, but <laughs> didn't realize how sharp those things are. And right, let's go ahead and get started this morning in child's pose. So find kind of the middle of your mat and go ahead and get yourself settled in. And just start by recommend closing your eyes and just start taking a couple super deep breaths, inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose, trying to get your exhales deep, a little deeper every time. And take two more deep breaths. When you're ready, come up just a little bit onto your forearms. We'll go ahead and deep thread the needle. So right arm comes up to the ceiling. Follow your fingertips with your gaze. Hold it there for just a second. Make sure both of your hips are still seated onto your ankles. Go ahead and thread the needle, sliding your right arm underneath your left. Extend your left arm long. Right ear comes down to the mat. Go ahead and bring your left arm in just a little bit, back onto your forearm. Bring your right hand up to the ceiling again. A little unwind. And bring it back to meet your left on the mat. Same thing now on the left side, left arm comes up. Follow your fingertips with your gaze. And then go ahead and slide it through underneath your right arm and bring your right arm um, extended out in front of you as you go. Left ear comes down to the mat. And make sure that you have both hips still seated on your ankles as much as you can. Okay, go ahead and start to unwind, bring your right arm back a little bit in front of you, left arm comes up to the ceiling, and go ahead and place it down to meet your right in front of you. We'll push up into tabletop position, Shoulders stacked over your elbows, stacked over your wrists, hips stacked over your knees, feet can be flat on the mat, the tops of your feet flat on the mat. We'll go ahead and move through some cat cows, just getting your spine warmed up. And on your inhales, go ahead and draw your belly button up. Push through your hands to get a good arch through your back. On the exhale, go ahead and drop your shoulders, slide them down your back, gaze up to the corner of the ceiling. Inhale, cat. 
belly button comes up, press through your hands to get a nice back stretch through the shoulders. Inhale, cow, drop your belly, bring your chest forward, eyes come up to the ceiling. And we do that one more time. Inhale, cat, belly button comes up, push through your shoulders. And exhale, cow, drop everything, chest comes forward, eyes face to the top of the ceiling. Good. Find neutral spine. It's nice and flat. And we'll come into our bird dog. So left arm comes long, right leg kicks back. Push through that right shoulder as much as you can. So push with your right hand to lift up and out instead of dropping. It's going to be nice and lifted. Because it's kind of that feel that you want to get in the water too, where you're really high and engaging your core, really high on top of the water. And from here, we go ahead and crunch in, knee to elbow, extend, crunch, knee to elbow, inhale, extend, exhale, crunch, knee to elbow, exhale, extend, hold for just a second. So we'll come into the 90 degree kind of plane rotation. I don't know what the official name is. So go ahead and bring your right leg kind of out to the right side and counterbalance with your left arm and try and get as much as you can just out to the sides of you. Okay, try not to drop that right leg, hold it, bring it back to center. Go ahead and release back down to the mat. Same thing now on the right side, right arm comes forward, left leg kicks back. Really extend, push through that left hand to lift out of your left shoulder. And hold here for just a second. Make sure you're as long as you can. Imagine you're being pulled in both directions. Good, exhale, crunch, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. Make sure you're pressing through that left hand. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. One more. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, extend. Same thing on this side. Start to counterbalance. Bring your right arm off to the side. Left leg out to the side as much as you can without dropping that left foot. And hold. And press through the top of your foot in your left hand to get some leverage. And bring it back to center and release back down to the mat. Very nice. Okay, from here we're gonna go into some bear holds and bear walks. So just right where you are, all you're gonna do is um, uncheck your toes so your toes come onto the mat. We're just gonna have a slight lift in our knees, so about one to two inches off the mat. And we'll go ahead and take one step forward. Raise your left hand, right foot. Same thing, right hand, left foot, comes forward, and then come back. Left foot, right hand, left hand, right foot. So just two forward, two back. Let's go through that two more times. Two forward, two back. One more, two forward, two back. Next. Go ahead and release. And um, we'll move into downward facing dog. So press up and back with your hips into that upside down V position. We've been here before. This is your first one this morning. So it might feel a little bit tighter than usual. That's totally fine. Just start to pedal out your feet a little bit. Moving your weight from one foot into the other. You start to bring some blood flow into your ankles. Movement into your hips. Make sure that you have your hands engaged, but we want to relax our shoulders. So if you notice that your shoulders are up by your ears, go ahead and take a second to just let them go. You put some more weight into all 10 fingers. Try to open up those stars to turn our elbows inward just a little bit more. Good. From here, we move into forward fold. So gaze at the spot between your hands. This morning, for this first one, just go ahead and slowly tiptoe your way. Walk your feet to meet your hands. Then we in our forward fold. Grab opposite elbows. Let everything go. Just let gravity pull you down. 
If this feels like a lot this morning on your hamstrings, you can go ahead and bend your knees a little bit. It'll take the stretch out of your hamstring, you get more of a lower back opening. Right, from here, halfway left, hands, your palms on your shins. Imagine that you're peering over a cliff, get that back nice and flat. And exhale, let it go, hold all the way back down to the mat, just let your arms dangle. And then slowly, one vertebrae, the vertebrae, come up into a standing mountain pose. Your head is the last thing to lift. Here, go ahead and take a second to find your balance. Option to close your eyes, it makes finding your balance a little bit more challenging, but it'll also be kind of more of a true center point. So just take a second to roll your shoulders down your back, open your palms up to the front of the room, and start to just play around. They're really slight movements, but just drop forward and back on your feet, bringing your weight into your tippy toes, back into your ankles, if you have your eyes closed, it feels like you're rocking a lot. You're probably rocking like maybe an inch. But it just kind of heightens the sensation a little bit more. And then side to side, just kind of shift your weight into one foot and then the other. Trying to find what we call the knife edge of your foot, which is the outside edge of your foot. Trying to get all your weight on one side and the other. Like I said, we're going to be moving into some balancing postures today. So we're just going to kind of find your center right now. And then let's move into a circle, rotating clockwise first. So kind of just imagine that you're rotating on the clock, shifting your weight in a circle, coming forward to the right, backward to the left, forward when you get to the top, go ahead and switch direction, coming to the left, to your heel, to right, forward, and then as much as you can, try and find center. Your eyes are closed, go ahead and blink your eyes open. Hands come up and overhead. Palms to touch. This is kind of like our cactus back bend, but we are going to have our hands together today. Go ahead and bring your gaze to meet, um, or to your hand. Shift your hips slightly forward. We go into the back bend. It's nice and easy on this first one, so I need your spine mobility warmed up. And the more you tuck your hips forward, the more you're going to protect that lower back, and the more you're going to be able to bend back. And as if it's a pencil, use your fingertips to trace a line as much as you can from the back corner of whatever ceiling you're on right now. Let it come back to center. Exhale, right arm drops back, left arm forward, standing feet. Again, pay, pay attention to your hips. We don't want our hips to open to the side. Hips stay spread to the front. Or you're doing just rotating through your thoracic spine. Gaze drops back. Close your back fingertips. And right arm comes back up to meet the left. Exhale, same thing on the other side. Left hand drops back, right arm forward. Keep those hips in line. Gaze comes to the back of the room. As much as you can imagine that you're getting pulled in either direction, so you're getting a really nice shoulder opening. Making sure your shoulders are drawn so down your spine, you don't want them lifted up towards our ears. Good, back to center. Exhale, chair. So this is what we did last time. We won't do the whole series this time, but we'll just slightly drop down into our chair pose. Dropping your hips back. Make sure you have a little bit of tuck in your hips to protect your lower spine. And your knees are back enough so that you can see your toes as you gaze down. Good, hold for the three, two, one. Go ahead, forward fold and release. Back down to the mat, plant your hands. Option to jump or step back into your high plank pose. We're going to hold this for just a second. We're going to do some arm balances. We're really going to get our forearms and our shoulders all nice and warmed up for this morning. So from here, we're going to go into our low plank. So slowly, really slowly this morning, start to lower down bring your elbows next to your body into your low plank. So you're just hovering over the mat. Hold for three, two, one. Upward facing dog. Option to take lazy up dog for this first one. 
which just means that your legs are on the mat. Option to stay more active. Press through the tops of your feet to keep your legs lifted off the mat. Okay. And exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, so we're going to work through that one more time, a little bit faster this time. So inhale, gaze at the spot between your hands. Exhale, jump or walk your feet to meet. Inhale, halfway lift, palm to shin. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, slowly rise all the way, hands up and overhead into mountain pose. Go ahead and grab your fingers, leaving your pointer finger pointed. Call a steeple grip so you have your finger up. Exhale, back bend. Trace the ceiling with your finger as far back as you can go, pushing it forward. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, T to the right. Right hand drops back. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, T to the left. Left hand drops. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, jump or step back into your high plank. Shift your weight a little bit forward on your tippy toes. Come into low plank. Hold for just a second. And then move into upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Go ahead and push your hips up and back. We're going to go ahead and start to open up our hips a little bit. So kick your right leg up. We're going to bring it over the left side body. So we're just twisting a little bit to the right. As much as you can, try and keep your shoulders square. And it's really easy to like really open up to the right side. Keep your shoulders square, all that's opening, and from your hips down. Good. Okay, thank you. Right, like, down, same thing on the left side. Left leg kicks up, and then drop your heel over to the right side, opening up that right, or I guess this is your left hip. Make sure you're pushing through evenly with both hands, still so try to keep your shoulders square. Might be tighter on one side than the other. This side is super tight on me for some reason. Good, bring it back to center. Right leg comes up. And then right knee, right elbow. On this as much as you can, try and bend your elbows just a little bit to get the triceps engaged. That'll help you later on as we start to warm up for our pro pose today. Exhale, right leg comes back. Then next exhale, right knee, left elbow. Again, try to keep them bent as if you're going into a low plank almost. Right leg comes back. Right knee to nose. As much as you can, try and get your right knee all the way over to your nose. Good. Right leg kicks back. You can go ahead and release. Drop it down and move the left. Same thing now on the left side, left leg comes up. Um, left knee, left elbow. Get that little elbow bend if you can. And if you're coming into that low plank, and release left leg back up. Same thing, left knee, right elbow. Get that little 90 degree bend in your elbows if you can. Get a release. Left leg comes back up long. And last one, left knee to nose. Left as you can, try and get your knee to your nose. Good. Release, left leg comes long. You go ahead and drop it down to meet your right. Good, from here, option to step or jump. If you're feeling warmed up, you can go ahead and jump into a what we call a frog squat. There's Feet are going to come outside your hands on your mat. You get an option just to walk there if you're not feeling quite warmed up yet. Or just coming into a really, really low squat. If you need, you can go ahead and just like hold yourself up with your hands a little bit. If you can, drop down as much as you can and go ahead and use your elbows to push your knees out. That should feel like a pretty good hip opener. 
I'm just gonna hold that for a second. Cool. And then option to stay here as I explain the next bit, um, or just option to come to a seat on your mat and take a sip of water, take a little break. Um, we're gonna move into another inversion. So last week we worked on handstands. Uh, this week we're gonna work on what we call crow pose. So basically it's everything that we just did to warm up. Um, you're gonna make sure the same position that you are now in frog pose. All you're gonna do is shift forward and then bring your legs to balance on your forearms. Um, so you're basically it's gonna look like this. So if you're in frog pose, you're just gonna put your arms down as if you're coming into a low plank pose. Bring your uh, knees up as high as you can, like on your tippy toes. So your knees are just going to rest on your tricep. And you're just shifting forward just a little bit. Option to keep your toes on the mat and just kind of play with your balance. If you can and you feel really comfortable, just bring your toes up. And you're just coming into that 90 degree bend that we use to come from high to low plank. And just hold. So. For those of you that have your camera on, there's only a couple of you this morning, but just take a couple of minutes to play with that a little bit. Um, and I can go ahead and kind of see what's, what you guys are doing and go ahead and offer some tips. So the same pose you're just on that low or wide-legged squat from here. And just planting your hands onto the mat and just slowly shifting your weight forward Bending those elbows as much as you can. If they allow you, it's pretty just like shift your weight. Very nice. Nice. You see that really good camera on is looking good. Good. And just keep playing with it a little bit. Yeah, maybe like shake out your wrist a little. I know you're just doing a lot of shoulder stuff. But the higher you can get your knees, so the more you can come onto your tiptoes, the higher your knees come kind of near your armpits, the easier the weight shift is going to be just to kind of drop forward just a little bit. Nice. Looks good, looks good. Nice. Nice and controlled, nice. Cool, so that's just another thing to play with along with the headstands. It's really good core strength, really good arm balance strength. Um, I know you guys have been doing a lot of push-ups and pull-ups. It's just kind of a different way to use those little muscles. Um, but nice. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and just take your child's pose for a second. So come back onto your mat. Arms come out long in front of you. And just take a second to reset. It's kind of a quick warm up, and the imbalances can definitely, the inversions, arm balances can definitely get your heart rate up a little bit. Just take a second to slow down your breath, slow down your heart rate. Good. When you're ready, we'll go ahead and meet in downward facing dog. And then slowly walk your feet up to meet your hands. Thank you. And we'll come all the way up into a stand. From here, we're gonna move into some more standing balances. So we're moving into our tree pose. So find that nice balance spot that we had before. Bring your palms to face the front of the room. Stand nice and tall, shoulders come down your back. Core is engaged just by tucking your hips forward a little bit. And slowly we'll go ahead and lift our right leg up as high as you can without touching it first. And then you can go ahead and grab your ankle and move it up as far as you can um, into the crease of your leg. Good. If you're feeling comfortable here, you can go ahead and lift your arms up overhead, just kind of into a Y position. And just hold that for a second. Okay, straight on to you guys. Then from here, we're going to move into figure four. So option to keep your foot kind of the same level that it's at. Just bring your foot over your leg so that your ankle is kind of hooked. You're using your foot to hook onto your leg. And then we're just going to drop down 
a little bit into standing figure four. An option, you can put your hands on your ankle and knee for a little bit more support, or you can go ahead and bring your hands up into prayer pose. Good, sink down as much as you can. Should feel a really good stretch through that right hip and right glute. And then slowly come back up. Don't let that foot drop. Come into one legged Tadasana. Right leg is a 90 degree bend in front of you. Those are flexed. Going to move into our warrior three position that we did last week. So slowly, you're kind of just tick tocking your body over that left leg to access. You're going to rotate your torso down. Right leg is going to come back. Kick back straight in front of you. Again, pay attention to your hips that are not rotating out to the right. Lift out of that right or out of that left standing leg. Put some good pressure in that option to keep your hands in prayer position. If you're feeling pretty comfortable, you can take the challenge of extending your arms out in front of you. Just make sure that your shoulders are dropped. You're not hugging your ears with your shoulders. Good. Hold it for three, two, one. Bring your hands back to prayer pose if they're not there already. Continue to hold it. We're just going to drop our hands down to the mat. Keep that right leg lifted. Coming into standing splits. So it's okay if your leg, if your right leg drops a little bit. Just getting a super big stretch through that left hamstring. Good. Then go ahead and do step back, big movement into a crescent lunge. You bring that right leg back down to the mat. Hip square to the front. Go ahead and hold that for just a second. And then big open up into warrior two. And just drop and rotate that back foot. Big bend through the front leg. Good. Go ahead and flip your palms. Extend your weight forward just a little bit into extended side angle. Left elbow comes down to that left knee. Right hand comes up overhead. Go ahead and gaze towards the ceiling at your right fingertips. And inhale, reverse warrior. You can go ahead and straighten out that front leg. Face is in reverse triangle. Sorry, slide that right arm down the back leg. Avoid putting any pressure into that right arm. Just kind of sliding it down. Most of the work is still coming from your core. Left arm comes up overhead. Pay attention to that shoulder. Again, make sure that it's dropped. Avoid lifting it towards your ear. Good. Big windmill, arms come all the way back down to the mat to frame your left foot. Left foot comes back to meet your right. We'll work through vinyasa, high plank, shift your way forward, low plank, upward facing, and downward facing dog. Nice. Take a second here to pedal off the feet. We're gonna move into the same thing now on the other side. I mean, there's a lot of time standing on one leg. Good. Go ahead and gaze at the spot between your hands. Option to walk or jump. Meet your feet or meet your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Come all the way up into standing. Palms to face the front. Shoulders come up. To your ears and then draw them to the back and down as if your shoulder blades are just sliding down your back. Nice. And we will go into tree pose, same thing on the left side. As much as you can, try and get your left foot as high as you can, start without touching first um, onto your right leg. And then you can go ahead and grab it if you feel like you can come up a little bit higher. And just go ahead and hold that for a second. Find somewhere either in front of you. I kind of choose like a 45 degree angle in front of me on the ground. And just hold your gaze. Something unmoving will help you balance. Totally normal for one side to feel a little bit more wobbly than the other. Okay, we'll move into figure four. 
Go ahead and bring that left foot to kind of hook over your right leg. And then slowly start to drop down. Make sure that left leg is flexed though, because that's going to protect the knee as we start to sink down into it. And slowly start to sink down. Again, option to go ahead and just place your hands on your knee and ankle. Option to bring your hands into a prayer position. Sink down as much as you can. Really firing up that left glute as you go. Good, and we'll hold for three, hold for two, hold for one. Start to slowly rise back up. Keep that right or that left leg up as much as you can. Try not to drop it into one legged Tadasana. So, one legged mountain pose. Your leg, left leg is just a 90 degree bend in front of you. And slowly start to come over as if your hips are the access point. Shifting so your torso is coming over into warrior three. Left leg comes back, keeping that right leg nice and strong. Really lift through that right hip instead of dropping into it. Think about pressing through the right leg to lift you up and out. Good. Again, option to extend your arms out if you feel comfortable. Option to keep them in a prayer. As much as you can, come into kind of a standing figure T position with your body. Good, we'll hold for three. Hold for two. Ooh, hold for one. Keep that left leg lifted. We're just going to drop our hands down to the mat now. Into standing splits. Make sure your hips are square instead of rotating out to that left side. It will get you higher. So that's not what we're going for right now. We just want to keep our hips square and get a really nice big stretch to the right hamstring. As much as you can, relax through the top two. Take your torso and your arms. Try to be relaxed through there. Good. And then big movement from here. We're just going to drop back into a crescent lunge. So left leg comes to the mat. Arms come up to the front. Hips are square towards the front of the room. Hold for just a second. Give that nice opening through the left hip flexor. Make sure your shoulders are down your back. And then exhale into warrior two. Rotate out to the side. Adjust your feet so your left foot or your left foot is now pointing towards the short edge of the mat. Right leg is pointing to the front. Big 90 degree bend through that front leg. Hold for just a second. Be nice and strong. Make sure your shoulder blades are relaxed on your back or your arms are active. Flip your palms. Exhale, extended warrior. So just shift your weight forward a little bit. Right elbow comes down to the right knee. Left arm comes up overhead. Follow your fingertips with your gaze. And now just relax into that front knee. I know we've been on that leg for a while now. Really try and lift up out of it with your core. You can be supporting yourself mostly with those obliques on either side. Good. From here, reverse triangle. Straighten out that front leg. Right arm comes up overhead. Slide that left arm down to your left leg. Little to no weight in that leg again. Mostly holding yourself through your obliques. Take a second to make sure your shoulder is, rotated, or is pulled away from your ear. Just nice and relaxed. Good. Big windmill down to the mat. Bring your hands down to frame your foot. Left leg kicks back and bring it down to meet your right downward facing dog. Nice. All right, from here we are going to go into a little bit of core work. Not that we haven't been using our core already, but um, we can do a little bit more and then we'll move into our four postures. That felt like a lot this morning. <laughs> um, balancing and core stuff. So, you guys are doing a good job. Hey, so, those of you that I can see, it's looking good. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of shake out your wrist for a second. We've been doing a lot of shoulder work and a lot of pressure on that. We're going to move into a plank pose, a couple side planks, and then back to those banana holds that we do with Ophir. We had some new variations this week that were killer, <laughs> but really good. So we'll do some of those with you guys. Um, whenever you're ready, go ahead and meet me in a forearm plank. Mm -hmm. so same thing as your high plank, just run your forearms now. If you can, kind of bring your hands into like a sphinx pose. 
So I want your palms flat onto the ground instead of like clasped in front of you. Um, this kind of allows you to push your weight up out of your shoulders a little bit more like that. Again, kind of getting that feeling that you want on top of the water where your core is engaged and you're feeling really high versus just like sinking into your core and shoulders. Yeah, so we'll just hold this. 10 more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Without dropping, just go ahead and shift onto your right side. So right arm comes onto the mat, left arm comes up towards the ceiling, and we're gonna do a side plank hold with your left, or a star plank hold, sorry. So left leg is up, left arm is up, as high as you can. We'll hold that for 10, hold it for nine, keep that right hip high, don't let yourself sink into it, push out your right, right, push out from your right shoulder. Four, three, two, one, without dropping, come back to center. Same thing now on the left side. Adjust so that your left, um, left arm is now your support. Right arm comes up to the ceiling. Right leg comes up as high as you can. Flex those toes. We'll hold the star plank for 10, nine. Make sure you're pushing out through that left arm, not letting that left hip drop. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Very nice, come back into four front plank. And go ahead and drop back down to your knees. Nice. Check out those wrists, shoulders if you need for just a second. When you're ready, go ahead and come onto your back. And kind of propping yourself up on your elbows. Good. From here, we're going to go into the banana rocks. So this is the spot where you want to keep your torso. So as soon as you lift off your elbows, try not to come up higher or drop lower. So the point is just from right here. Stay nice and controlled through your core. You're just slowly lifting your arms up as high as you can go. The higher you go up overhead, the harder it is. So I'm still not able to get my hands overhead, but as high as you can go. This morning, that's great. We'll go ahead and hold with your feet lifted off the ground just a couple inches. Ready, go. So hold for 10. Three. Two, one, don't drop, just start adding some flutter kicks. Good, make sure if you need to check for just a second, you can bring your elbows back down, just a tap on the mat to be sure you're in the right pose. And bring your hands right back up overhead. Keep those flutter kicks. Good, keep flutter kicking, and now we're gonna add rotations. You're just gonna drop as if you were like holding a weight or a med ball or something. Drop your hands over to the right, to center, left, to center, don't lose your flutter kicks, keep those keep feet kicking. Center, left, center, right, center. One more time through, left, center, right, center. Keep kicking, left, center, and hold. Kick, 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 kick. We're gonna go into 10 rocks. So feet come steady. We're just rocking up and down, just little, little rocks. Nothing from the hip flexors, all from the core. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Go ahead and release. Nice job. Go ahead and just flip over into Cobra Pose. So it's like downward or upward facing dog, just on your elbows. Option to come up into lazy. Upward dog too, if you need more of a core stretch. Just kind of let yourself breathe into it and let it go for a second. All right, go ahead and just drop down onto your mat. We're gonna move into lotus poses. This is some good kind of lower back strength. Um, so just right where you are, I just wanna flip around so my head is facing you guys. So just from here, your arms are long at your sides. You're just gonna lift up like a Superman pose, but your arms are gonna be long beside you. 
So for the first one, we're just gonna lift out of our back and hold that for 10. Then we'll add in the legs, then we'll do both together into bow pose. Or so whenever you're ready, go ahead and lift up just through your torso, pressing your hips into the ground as much as you can to really lift your chest, shine your chest forward. Imagine your shoulders are sliding down your back, putting your fingertips towards the back wall. Hold it for five, four, if you can get higher for three, as high as you can go, two, one, go ahead and release down to the mat. Good. Next one, we're gonna add our feet to it. So same thing, torso comes up. This time, lift your feet just about an inch off the ground. We'll hold that for 10, nine, eight. As much as you can, try and get as little of your body on the mat as you can so you're really lifting up through your torso and up with your legs. Two, one, Ooh, go ahead and release down to the mat. Before we go into the last one, just kick your feet up so they're at like a 90 degree angle. Do some windshield wipers with your feet, so just move them side to side. Release that lower back before we go into the peak pose for this. Good. And just keep your feet up. The same we're going into bow pose. So it's the same thing we just did. Except now, if you can, you're going to go ahead and grab on the opposite or the inside of your feet and kick into your hands to try and open up your shoulders and get as little of your body as you can onto the mat. So let's go in three, two, one. Kick your hand or kick your feet into your hands as much as you can. Keep your knees together as much as you can, and just try and lift your core, chest, knees, everything off the mat. Hold for five, four, a little higher, two, one, and release. Nice. Good. From here, just flip onto your back. Just like a little pancake rolling over. And we'll move into our four postures. First, bring your knees into your chest. Some release in that low back. That was a lot of lower back work. Good. And then just go ahead and bring your right knee into your chest. Left leg goes long. Bring your right knee up and over your body. And do a supine twist. Arms come out to a T. Gaze over that right hand. Again, making sure that that right shoulder is on the ground, and then just letting your knee fall wherever it does. You don't need to pull it or force it, or try and do anything. Take two more deep exhales, and on the exhales, just see if you can sink down and relax into the stretch just a little bit more. Slowly unwind your right knee to your chest and your left. Just hug into a tiny ball, bring your forehead to your knees. A little bit more release. Good, back down onto the mat, bring your left knee into your shoulder. Right leg goes long. Left knee comes up and over your body. Be a nice 90 degree bend in your knee. Arms come out to a T, gaze goes over your left fingertips. Good. And just let gravity do the work on your next couple exhales. Try and focus your breath on wherever is tight and see if you can just focus on releasing and letting whatever tension go, whatever you're trying to hold in this pose, just let it relax. So you start to unwind your left knee into your chest, and your right knee to meet it. Go into happy baby. So grabbing the outside edges of your feet, stamp the soles of your feet to the ceiling as much as you can. Just kind of coming out. It's like a 90 degree bend with both legs. 
Watch your hip flexors open up. Good, option to stay here, option to kind of kick one leg out and the other, so bring your right, uh, right foot in, left leg kicks out. Did a lot of hamstring work today, a lot of balancing. We'll make sure we recover those muscles a little bit. Good, bring your left leg in, right leg kicks out to the side. You roll over a little bit towards that side too for a deeper stretch. Good, back to center. And then go ahead, one last one. Bring your forehead to your knees. Squeeze everything you can into the tightest ball possible. Super tight, 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 tight. And then let everything go. Extend, take up as much space as you can on your mat. Palms come up to the ceiling. Extend your fingertips wide, as wide as they can go. Let your ankles drop. And just let yourself be. We're going to taking 10 deep breaths and see how long you can make those breaths last. Deepening on every exhale. Try and focus on your breath and notice where it enters your body and where it exits your body. As much as you can, just try and let your body sit wherever it, wherever it planted. No, no, no need to fidget or try and feel straighter wherever it landed. That's where you are today. Even exhales through your nose. Just a couple more breaths. Start to bring movement back into your fingertips. Circle out your wrists. Circle out your ankles. And whenever you're ready, slowly make your way up into a seated position. You guys are all set. <laughs> Well, cool. so thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I know you guys are doing a lot of strengthening stuff with Dave. I would encourage you as much as you can, maybe put together a little like 10, 15 minute routine in the mornings to get yourself warmed up with what you now know. We've gone through, um, I think like five, four or five weeks of this now. Um, and then continue to practice the inversions too. It's just fun, it's something different. Um, it uses your core in a different way, um, but it's good to just kind of switch up the blood flow in your body every once in a while. Um, and then if we go out for a base swim, hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. But other than that, enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Linnea, very much. That was, that was, I, hey, guys, before you sign off, and I know some are already bailing, if you guys I still encourage you guys to be plugging in um, activities into the uh, tracking uh more of a game it's not like i'm not checking it to see is someone doing work more gaming to see you know can you do more than someone else or are you you know are you having fun with it so i just keep encouraging you guys to do that so uh so thank you again linnea and uh if you guys have anything feel free to stick on but other than that have a great uh whatever day of the week it is and cook beach thank you thank you